There is a worldwide shortage of human organs for transplantation. However, with sufficient advances in technology and our improved understanding of genetics, it might be possible to end this shortage with organ transplantations from other species. Xenotransplantation is the transfer of living cells, tissues, and organs between species. In January of 2022, surgeon Bartley Griffith performed an experimental xenotransplantation procedure on patient David Bennett. He, he said to me two very important things. He said, I don't want to die. And he said, if I do, maybe you'll learn something to help others. Bennett is a 57-year-old man with end-stage heart failure. He was on a cardiopulmonary bypass for a while and was too sick to be put on the transplant waiting list. Given that he otherwise would have faced certain death, the researchers got permission from the FDA to give Bennett an experimental pig heart. Their first reaction is probably why would they choose a pig heart? Why not a chimpanzee? Since we're more genetically related to a chimpanzee, wouldn't it make more sense? Wouldn't a chimpanzee heart be a better fit? Well, as it turns out, it would not be a good fit. Quite literally, in fact. You see, in 1964, James Hardy, the man who carried out the first human lung transplant, thought the same thing. He too had a patient who would not be eligible for human heart transplant due to his condition, and he obtained approval to transplant a chimpanzee heart into this patient. After the surgery, the heart failed in only a few hours. The chimpanzee heart was simply not large enough to support the circulation of the much larger human body. Well, if chimpanzees don't work, what about other non-human primates? Aside from running into the same issue with size, there are other considerations if we were to scale our xenotransplantation operation up to a national or even global scale. If we were to compare non-human primates and pigs, we would look at which species is more suitable for experiments. First, chimpanzees and many other non-human primates are currently endangered and are facing the threat of extinction. Pigs, however, are much easier to breed when compared to apes. Pig pregnancies are shorter, they have much more offspring, and their offspring reach adulthood much faster. As for organ size, pig organs are of adequate size for human transplantations, and we already have a lot of experience with the genetic engineering of pig cells. This makes pigs a much more reliable option when it comes to xenotransplantations and research. All that is not to say that there are no differences between our genome and pig's genomes. In fact, the differences between our immunological makeup is the biggest challenge we face currently. The pigs used for David Bennett's surgery are not regular pigs. In fact, they're pigs with 10 gene edits. Using CRISPR, scientists edited a total of 10 genes, four of which were eliminated from the pig's genome, while six human genes were added to the pig's genome. To understand the subject better, let's take a look into which genes were knocked out and which genes were knocked in to make this surgery feasible. Obvious genes for scientists to start with are genes that may cause hyperacute rejection once the organ is transferred. Starting with GGTA1 gene. This gene produces a major xenoantigen involved in hyperacute rejection, which is galactose alpha 13 galactose, or alpha-gal for short. This enzyme is found in most mammals, including pigs, however it is not found in humans and other primates. Thus, if the human immune system recognizes these glycoproteins on the surface of any cells, the immune system would start hyperacute rejection of the organ and attack the cells themselves. Along with this gene, two other carbohydrate antigens were eliminated by knockout of CMAH and beta 4 gal genes of the pig. The fourth and last gene that was knocked out is the growth hormone receptor gene. Any of the pigs who are genetically modified for xenotransplantations have rapid organ growth. This highlights the growth potential of the organs even post-transplantation, which may impair the function of the organ in the new recipient. Since the growth hormone is a major stimulator for organ growth, scientists deleted its receptor gene to reduce the size of pig's organs. This allows researchers to obtain perfectly sized organs ready for xenotransplantations. Now let's take a look at the genes that were added to the pig's genome. For those genes, scientists mainly focused on adding genes that can help prevent both hyperacute rejection and long-term rejection types. The first two knocking genes are human CD55 and human CD46. 
These genes mainly serve to complement inhibitory genes. Simply explained, they trick the recipient human immune system into thinking the organ is a human organ with all the necessary surface signals. This prevents blood clots in the arteries by eliminating the possibility of antibody binding and natural killer cells adhesion. The second two genes to be knocked in are human thrombomodulin, or TABM for short, and human endothelial C-receptors, or EPCR gene. These genes have shown benefits in preventing thrombotic microangiopathy, which are microscopic blood clots. While the pig DNA does contain TBM, it does not bind well enough to human thrombin, making the addition necessary for a successful xenotransplantation. The final two knocking genes are human heme oxygenase 1, or HO1 for short, and human CD47. These two genes are immunomodulatory genes that serve to reduce inflammation in the xenograft and reduce phagocytosis by the human macrophages. CD47 is able to suppress the activation of T-cells and macrophages that may attack the organ cells, while HO1 has a strong anti-apoptotic and anti-inflammatory effects. After all these gene edits, there was one more point of contention that must be addressed, which is the fear of transferring potentially fatal porcine endogenous retroviruses from pigs to humans. However, through animal husbandry, the porcine endogenous retrovirus C has been bred out of these pigs, helping prevent the chance of perf transmission from pigs to humans. Further, the animals are grown in pathogen-free facilities that do not pose risk to human donors, and the pigs are also tested every three months to ensure that they are perf C free. Thus, the pigs used for David Bennett's surgery were deemed to be safe and retrovirus free. Given all the gene edits and all the procedures that went into play into producing this pig heart and the xenotransplantation, the doctors are truly comfortable that they're ahead of any possible rejections as of now. Overall, these edits have produced CRISPR pigs that are retrovirus free. As seen in David Bennett's surgery, these pigs can provide organs crucial for patient survival. The current success of xenotransplantation can provide hope for individuals in need of organ transplants. Today, approximately 17 people die each day waiting for an organ transplant. That's approximately 6,205 people each year. And many more die because they're ineligible to be placed on the list itself. However, with the possibility of harvesting organs from animals and not being constrained to waiting for human organs, we can eliminate those numbers.